Okay. Okay. So hi everyone. My name is Luis with the Salinas Public Library. Um, we're having a graphic novel contest. And for that, we are doing some interviews with graphic novel creators. We are here with Jared, Jared and Jay. Um, they collaborated, collaborated together on the graphic novel um, Lemonade Code. Hi guys, um, welcome and thank you for being here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks, this is great. Nice. Um, so I'm gonna start with the, with the questions. Um, question number one, would you please tell us a little bit more about your joint collaboration with Lemonade Code? Um, what's a graphic novel about? And from what I read here, um, there is a lot, a lot of um, lemonade. Why lemonade? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the lemonade code is a science fiction comedy novel for middle grade students that uh, centers around a kid named Robbie Reynolds, and he's like a super genius in the near future. We don't really give a, a date, but just somewhere where technology and everything's in full bloom. Uh, he opens a high-tech lemonade stand that can replicate any flavor of lemonade you want, no matter how delicious or disgusting. And some of them get pretty disgusting. And then a the little girl moves in across the street and she opens an old-fashioned lemonade stand, starts crushing him in sales, and the little super genius ego can't handle it. And he plots his revenge. Um, for lemonade, um, well, lemonade is my favorite drink. That's one thing. But uh, the reason I based it on lemonade is because it had... Uh, kind of futuristic sci-fi elements. And I thought something like a lemonade stand duel, which is kind of uh, something you see in middle grade novels or younger adult novels kind of often would be enough to kind of ground the more fantastic elements into something familiar. And um, yeah, yeah, and I love lemonade. So, and it's just nice to come up with uh, all those different flavors. So it's a good time. Lemonade is pretty delicious. So uh, I got to agree. <laughs> <laughs> And how long did it take you to um, to complete this work from what I read in the past or um, in one of your blogs, it took a very long time. What was the process like? Yeah, so um, so Jerry can talk more about like uh, the writing process, but like whenever I, when I got the script, I, you know, immediately started like, you know, I read everything through, I started working on thumbnails and I was also working on other projects as well during this time. So it kind of like prolonged the entire uh, you know, situation. I was trying to finish it within a year, but it took like roughly four years <laughs> from the time I got the script to like the time it came out. Um, but it, you know, it came out great. So I'm, I'm really happy and glad that I put so much time and effort into uh, just trying to make it look as good as I could. But um, yeah, you know, the entire process, it was, uh, it was very easy. Uh, you know, Jared's a, you know, uh, you know very easy to work with <laughs> our editor was really cool um I honestly I felt like I you know was like I don't know I, I always thought that like I was trying to do too much so I always asked like hey is there something I can do or should do they didn't have any suggestions they're like no you're doing great man just keep on going no. <laughs> so like I I was like you know kind of skeptical at first I was like okay well I hope I'm doing okay but you know it all came out great um you know after I saw uh, Jared's reaction and also he talked about his kids reaction um, when I finished up the black and white before I colored it and she loved it as well and I was like okay well you know this is this is boding well <laughs> so I was I was very happy uh, but yeah that was uh, the entire process for me um, it's pretty simple yeah and um, for me uh, just writing it wasn't it's maybe a year process six months to a year I can't really say where it was the way we wrote it was um a different way than I normally write I kind of just sent her because the story's broken down into days I kind of just sent her every day as we went along and then we kind of made corrections for the most part as we went along and then one last time at the end so um yeah I, once I saw Jay's art I, I just didn't have anything to say the guy's incredible you know it's like <laughs> I saw it I loved it and uh, I wanted to get out of his way um part of the way this came together through the open submission program is that I came up with the story separately and then they put us together and Jay came on with the art. So we didn't necessarily get to build the idea up from the ground together. And um, that was something I was really looking forward to. So I was open for anything. And like I say, the guy just, he, he knocked it out the park, everything like uh, from character 
like the really expressive acting of the characters through the style he's using is actually pretty incredible. He gets a, a, a range of emotions, and especially for something uh, that's comedic. Uh, he has a nice, light comedic touch. And yeah, I was in love with the artwork from the first time I saw it. Nice. So blessed situation. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out Robin Herrera, if you're watching this, Robin. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> Were there any things that you wanted to see in the final product? And were the characters, Vase, and any, um, from any people that you know in real life, by any chance? Um, well, no, everything I wanted to, well, the one change we made that I think was for the better that I missed is that it had talking animals. I'm, I'm a fan of talking animals, old anthropomorphic, like uh, Looney Tunes, cartoons. And so a lot of the humor was kind of drawn from there. And so that was about the only th major change. Besides that, the story stayed pretty much the same. Um, we just chose to focus a little bit more, take the anthropomorphic animals out, focus a little bit more on the relationship between Daphne and Robbie. Uh, the kid, well, I got nine brothers and sisters and I don't know, 30 nieces or nephews. So those kids remind me of a lot of different kids in my family. It's kind of like an amalgamation. And uh, Robbie in particular is just something I see with smart young boys, sometimes smart young black boys too, uh, coming from maybe a disadvantaged situation. Uh, there's no, there's sometimes it's just not a place to put that energy. And they're so smart and, and their brains can lead them down, uh, you know, pretty peculiar paths. And so it's important that, you know, to have somebody there that's going to be able to guide that, that thing you know, as the world, as they get older. Uh, so that's pretty much the main thoughts on those two characters. Um, and the only thing I would say I missed, oh, uh, there was supposed to be a rap song that <laughs> Daphne was gonna do and Spotify. Like when we decided to do Spotify, I didn't know you had to monetize your tracks to put on Spotify. You can't just put something up. And since I had wrote it over a free beat on YouTube, I couldn't monetize it. I couldn't put the song up on Spotify. And so I guess that would be the main thing I missed, actually, even over the anthropomorphic characters. Yeah, uh, you know, it does kind of suck that, you know, that uh, song didn't come out yet. But, um, you know, I, I maybe in the future, I mean, there's always there's always tomorrow. I mean, you know, it, I'm not sure if it'll be on Spotify, but I, <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I guess we'll see in the future. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. I enjoyed everything from the beginning to the end. I didn't really like. I didn't really see anything else that I needed that I needed to add. There are a few ideas I have, like comic books, small like um, uh, like crossover comics. I have an idea where I have my main character from my series Stud. Who, he gets, you know, he's thirsty and he tries to get his lemonade. <laughs> so <laughs> I do a small short story. Uh, I might put that on my website at some point. But currently, um, you know, for the book itself, there's there's nothing that I you know wanted to add to it maybe a poster or something you know that i could draw in the future but um yeah that that's uh that's the only thing i could think of to add to it but I, I was very happy with you know how it all came out um you know just how it flowed well uh <laughs> i do remember the anthropomorphic uh animals in the very beginning when this was pitched to me i remember thinking uh this is gonna be really fun to draw main coon the size of I'm <laughs> <laughs> like, like be awesome but we had to change it and i was like okay well i'll just make them super fluffy <laughs> <laughs> all right it worked. but uh but yeah that was uh you know that was something that you know threw me off the very first time i saw the actual scripts i was like oh weren't they supposed to be talking but it was uh, it was uh, it came out really well yeah it, it was a rapping pomeranian and that uh, is that funny just to say rapping pomeranian <laughs> good time a little tough pomeranian with a rick ross voice <laughs> um jay when you when you came up with the sketches or with the character ideas uh what did your first um your first draft of the characters look like because you're a um, comic book artist but you're also a manga artist did you think about doing um co-lemonade um as a manga instead of a comic book so uh, so I have like, I feel like my style should be so, like categorized as like cartoony manga, um, you know, cause like I, I, I take a lot of heavy influences obviously from cartoons, but also from manga as well. And I guess the biggest difference between what I'm currently drawing today with Hammer, as opposed to, you know, what Lemonade Code is, is that I'm not coloring Hammer anymore. 
Um, when I was doing Hammer during this time, I was also coloring Hammer and then I had to start coloring Lemonade Code. So I was drawing them in the same style, but I realized that one, you know, I think it would look a lot better for Hammer to look uh, if it was toned because it would look more like a manga and, you know, it's coming out a lot more frequent. So it's a lot faster for me to finish it as well. So uh, when it comes to Hammer, like, that's the reason why I keep that in black and white and, you know, all that. But when it comes to Lemonade Code and, you know, the style of how it's drawn, honestly, if I would have just toned it, it, it probably would have looked, you know, just as cool as, you know, a Hammer uh, manga, um, you know. So I, I like the way it came out. I'm glad that I colored it because I wanted it to look and feel like a cartoon. Um, and honestly, I, you know, it's the same way I felt about, you know, Hammer as well. I've always wanted my style to be liked by people that don't necessarily like manga, but also be liked by people that do like manga, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like I, I wanted it to be a happy medium to where any and everybody that looks at it is like, huh, I like this. Let me, you know, keep on looking. Um, so I, I feel like right now my biggest difference is hammer is in black and white. And that's why it looks a little bit more like manga as opposed to Lemonade Code, which is in color. But yeah, I, uh, I, I'm glad that I colored it. I really am. It, it came out very well. Okay, exactly the way I've implanted it in a way. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Thank you for joining us, joining us, Manuel. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hey. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I have another question for you guys. Um, what are some of you, some of your favorite graphic novel creators? Um, and what are some of your graph your favorite graphic novels? You want to go first? Uh, sure, sure. I should have thought about this question more. <laughs> um, well, you... well, you know, I think I started off on graphic novels, uh, reading kind of collection of single print comics like, um, like Sandman, Invisible, I might, uh, Invisibles. I might be showing my age a lot. The old Swamp Thing by Alan Moore. So those are still kind of like my bread and butter when it comes to graphic novels. The first ones I kind of ever read. Um, Newer stuff, I don't know, man. I ran them. I, I, I picked up like a lot of the DC ones that they just did. I like them. I honestly really can't remember anybody's name, though. Uh, I tend to just like just read a lot of comic books and graphic novels. So, but I would say like the older ones tend to be my goodies. So, um, I would say the first graphic novel that like got me into comic books and stuff that I've read, I, <clears throat> I want to say it's Dragon Ball Z like number four i remember buying number four that's the is the fight scene between goku and vegeta uh so i remember buying that like with my own money i was 14 years old so like that probably was the very first like manga book that like i bought myself um before that i, I remember my brother would buy manga uh like ragnarok and stuff like that um you know so i, I read all that and you know i got into more comic books as i got older and now I would say probably my favorite graphic novel, I mean, you know, just a standalone graphic novel, I would say maybe Seconds by Brian Lee O'Malley. But like as a series, I mean, you know, One Piece is cool, <laughs> Dragon Ball Z, but Astro Boy, uh, you know, there's, you can see my, you know, my, my bookshelf. <laughs> and then there's several other books over there too. So, I mean, you know, it just really kind of depends. Um, I like, I just like reading comics in general, so. Okay, nice. And you bought your first graphic novel when you were 14. But before that, were you sketching um, at school, at home? Uh, and when did you start sketching? So I was like maybe six years old when I started drawing. Um, you know, it obviously wasn't that good back then. <laughs> but you got to start somewhere. And, uh, you know, my brother and I, we would actually always uh, be like rivals to each other. So I would draw a comic, he would draw a comic. I would like try to learn from him. Uh, I would always try to like, you know, just <laughs> so, uh, oh god are <laughs> right, you like on the truman show oh uh, man <laughs> <laughs> what is that boy? <laughs> looking around like oh god where's the camera uh anyway yeah um so i i just kept on drawing uh you know there was a show a long time ago called doug uh like doug funny with nickelodeon and stuff and he had a comic called quail man that he would draw and I was inspired by that. So I would draw my own comics. And you know, that I think is what, what like kind of prompted me to like you know, start drawing comics a long time ago. But now like that's uh yeah, you know, I've just been drawing ever since I was six and I just got better and better. I just never let it down. So yeah. Um what's your 
for both of you, what piece of advice do you have for someone who is not a very talented individual when it comes to writing or drawing, but really, really wants to um, come up with their own stories? What advice would you give them? Um, I say talent, it, talent is definitely a thing, but you know, it's, it, it only takes you so far. Like if you got the skill to sit down, if you got the patience to sit down and just keep doing it over and over and over, you'll, you'll reach a certain amount of skill yeah. that'll allow you to, you know, get your stories out and improve your art and everything. It's all a process. And so, um, sometimes people quit a little too early because they feel they're not a natural, but these are also things that can be learned. And so if you take the time just to learn them, then I think you can set yourself up for success. Yeah, um, I, I totally agree. Um, you know, drawing and writing, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's something that you got to do constantly to get better at. It's just like working out. I mean, clearly I don't work out. <laughs> Every time I want to, unfortunately, I, you know, get too busy or I give up a lot earlier. But had I, you know, uh, stuck with it when I originally started when I was 14, you know, now being 30, I'm pretty sure I'd be really ripped right now, but I'm not because <laughs> I gave up. So my point is for everybody that, uh, you know, really wants to, you know, stick with uh, drawing or, you know, writing or anything like that, you know, just stick with it because, yeah, you might not see results immediately. And yeah, you might get discouraged. But I mean, you know, if you really like doing it, if it really is something that you, um, you know, really strive and really have a drive to do, then you can make it work. It's just, it's going to take a lot of hard work. It's going to take a lot of time. You know, I've been drawing, like I said, since I was six years old. Uh, my very first book that came out with a publisher was when I was 19. I'm 30 right now, and there's still other books that I'm working on. I, I still have a day job. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know I, my manga is coming out, like, on a regular basis. Like, I think I've gotten to a point in my career that's, like, you know, pretty steady. But, I mean, you know, there's still obviously more growth. And, you know, all that really, like, all that to say is that it takes a lot of time. So you shouldn't get discouraged just because it's not immediate. And, uh, yeah. You know, if, if you really want to make it happen, you can make it happen. Okay, uh, Manuel, if you have any questions at any point, just um, ask, ask your questions if you have any, any questions. Okay. Yeah, it was it that go, um, how do you do the drawings? Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, one circle at a time. <laughs> I uh, so whenever I draw, um, I usually start off with like uh, like rough sketches. You know, something that's not recognizable <laughs> for anybody else, just for me. You know, just to get it onto the page and just get ideas out of my head. And then after I do that, I try to tighten it up. I try to redraw over my sketch just to make the lines a little bit more clear, more defined. Um, you know, so that's what I did, you know, for this book, I, you know, drew a lot of thumbnails and then I would draw on my tablet. I would, you know, just, you know, make sure that all of those thumbnails were translated digitally onto a page. And then I did that for 146 pages. <laughs> and then I, uh, you know, inked everything and colored it all. And yeah, it's, it's a long process, but, uh, you know, yeah, just, you know, one page at a time. It was, uh, it was very fun. Me and my brother were starting to do a comic, but... Then we didn't finish it because our mom cut us to eat and we never find the comic that we were starting doing it. <laughs> you gotta start another one. Uh, not anymore. <laughs> but it, well, uh, hey, I mean, you know, uh, try it out. Uh, try it again one day. You know, maybe not right now. Maybe you guys are too busy, but you know, whenever you get some time. I know the summer is here. You know, work on like a 10 page comic. That'd be fun, right? <laughs> I did that all the time when I was a kid at summertime. Oh, good times. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> Enjoy it while you can, man. Um, you know, um, if I'm new at this, um, I want to start writing comic, I mean, um, drawing comics and writing my own stories. How do I develop my own writing and drawing style? Um, so I think the thing that I usually give advice for people if they're trying to find a writing style is to uh kind of bite your favorites you know find the people that you like to write at and kind of write like them if you can 
And then over time, as you write like different writers that you like, you'll start seeing your own voice come out. You'll start actually naturally analyzing the writing too, because you'll be like, okay, these are my favorite writers. So what's the difference in writing this kind of thing versus this kind of thing? And in there, like if you if you really just stick with the writing every day, you'll naturally start questioning those kind of things or having those kind of questions that'll lead to you developing your own style. And um, I say that and, you know, kind of be fearless. I think writing is a thing to be fearless in. Uh, if you go into it with too much hesitation, it will consume you. <laughs> it will swallow you whole. I've been there. I've been through a lot of bad first drafts and a lot of unfinished projects, just, uh, you know, gone in with a lot of hesitancy. So that would be my two main advice, uh, things to say uh, that can, like, you know, help to really you know, the craft of writing and finding your style. Now, if it's about idea generation, I know me and Jay talk about this a lot. What I like to do is just take two different kinds of movies. So it could be like, a, I don't know, a Star Wars and Titanic, right? And then I'll try to find if I can come up with a story that will incorporate elements. It's not the exact same thing, but the elements, you know, whatever elements I choose to take, maybe the space opera, nature, Star Wars, and the uh, shipwreck of Titanic. And now you got Titanic in space. And that sounds silly, but that's actually how they generate a lot of ideas in Hollywood. That's, that's how you have to pitch a lot of your ideas. Uh, they call it like log lines. And so I find like it's pretty good for generating. You can come up with some pretty good stories. Um, I did it the other day as an example. And um, I think it's interesting. Y'all can tell me. Uh, but it would be you take Star Trek. So you take the idea of like a exploratory vessel and you do like a reality TV show, a galactic thing on it where they're all part of a TV show and somebody ends up getting murdered and it's like a murder mystery and like the whole galaxy gets caught up in the murder mystery trying to solve it with the cast members. So that's like, I, like, that's, I think that's a perfect idea for a comedy <laughs> until you said murder and then I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but no, but still a good, com but still a comedy. Like you, uh, you do like the murder mystery comedies, you know, like where it's not so serious. It reminds me of like a, a series for like Among Us. Like, what if Among Us was like a series like you know uh, the game? Yeah, I never played. Like, I would assume that the murderer would be on the ship. <laughs> right. I mean, that's what it reminds me of. But I like that idea. I think that would be really cool. So. Oh, thanks, man. You I get um, bored. you ever get bored? Of what Jared was saying, uh, you know, on my TikTok, uh, you know, at Jod, and I have a few uh, tutorials for comic books and stuff. And if you scroll all the way down, like one of the first videos I was making is, um, I actually have this inside of my PDF as well. I think I, you know, sent you a copy or I sent Chris a copy. So uh, maybe in the future, you guys can, you know, look at that. But um, if you take two properties, you put them together, uh, that creates something new. Uh, you can take one property and change one fundamental thing about it. An example would be take Castaway and change the island to Mars. And now you have The Martian, like it's the exact same movie. <laughs> <laughs> and then you could also take a historical event and, you know, just add an X factor to it. Uh, the example that I used is X-Men. And that's basically the civil rights movement, but with, you know, superpower mutants. And, you know, there you go. So, I mean, there's several different ideas to prompt uh, different ideas and stories in your head. I would say, you know, definitely use one of those three techniques um, that, that would help out. Uh, when it comes to trying to get your own style, uh, again, just to you know, pick it back off of what Jared was saying, yeah, you definitely need to you know look at other artists, other writers that you like, um, that you know try to imitate them. Uh, when it comes to art, I've said this a lot. Um, you know, pick like maybe three or four artists that you really really like looking at, and then try to learn their style like for months at a time. I mean, like, hey, for this next month. I'm going to draw like Dragon Ball Z. And then this next month, I'm going to draw like Death Note. And then, you know, eventually you'll get to a point where you can not only interchange uh, to other styles as well, but, you know, eventually they'll mix and mesh to a point where while you're drawing, you won't even think about it and whatever style comes out. Yeah, it'll have elements from both or more series that you've, you know, like studied. But I mean, you know, eventually it'll just mesh into what it is today. So, I mean, and another example of looking at all my styles, like if you look at my style, a lot of people say it's really unique and, you know, people say it stands out, but I mean, you know, it was, it's Bruce Tim, Rashad Doucette, my mentor, um, Trad Moore and Aichido Oda. But if you look at all of my images, like you can probably pick out like 
all of those artists because I, you know, just incorporated all of those into my style. So yeah, it's just a matter of like, you know, figure out what you want to do and then constantly doing it until, it, you know, you're satisfied with it. You said Trad Moore. That's the guy. He got kind of an angular style. It just, yeah, Trad, thinking- okay. Trad Moore, I actually met him a few times. Uh, I, you know, I, so I, full disclosure, I used to go to SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design um, in Georgia. And uh, Trad Moore used to go there. He actually was friends with my mentor. And um, I, I met him at a gas station one day. <laughs> and then the next day I met him was actually at a con, a convention. Uh, and then I think I met him at another convention as well. But yeah, he's really cool. Um, he was the one that did uh, Luther Strode. Uh, he yeah. also did some other stuff for uh, uh, Marvel. I think uh, the Silver Surfer and um, Ghost Rider. Yeah, but yeah, I love it. A lot of lines. Very, very, very sing- like things that don't make sense make sense when he draws them out. <laughs> like, like, amazing. Cool. But I loved how he would push every angle. And I also loved how, like, you know, Aichi Da Oda, you know, in One Piece, he would do that as well. And I, I really thought that was really cool. Bruce Tim, you know, all the big shoulders and the triangle. Mm-hmm. Man. <laughs> like, I, you know, everything, you know, uh, Batman DC Universe a long time ago. Like, you know, I love that art style. And uh, Rashad Doucette, like, you know, he was really cartoony. Uh, you know, his style is, like, really rough, but, like, just, like, his character designs, uh, you know, his colors, like, everything with Rashad's work, it's, like, it's very memorable and easily recognizable, like, instantly recognizable. So you know it's him. And that's what I wanted for my style. So I, I tried to incorporate all of those. And I think I'm, I'm you know, I, I think I'm, you know, in a pretty good spot. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely, definitely just keep at it, and uh, eventually it'll happen. Mm-hmm. Nice, Manuel. Do you have any any other questions? I think he's on mute. Oh, there he is. Uh, okay. Um, will you? I I do have a question. Um, would you mind describing your drawing and writing routine? Um, are you drawing and writing every single day? Do you do it for like an hour, two hours, three hours? Yeah, so um, <laughs> uh, all, right, all right. So what I usually do right now, I've changed my schedule. Um, instead of staying awake uh, really late and then going to sleep and waking up early to go to work, I've decided now to go to sleep early and then wake up really, really early. So I used to stay awake until like three and I would just try to finish up as many pages as I could. Now I go to sleep at 10 and I wake up at three and then I work until like eight. And then I go to work. If I have to work at nine, I'll go to work at nine and then I'll get off of work and then I'll come home and go to sleep. So usually during that time that those five hours in the morning, that's when I'll like, you know, focus on um, like my pages or whatever next step I need to do. Um, Currently right now, I'm about to finish up the chapter I'm working on for my series hammer. Uh, I'm about to start working on the next arc for Hammer, as well as also, I think, two other books that I have to write. <laughs> so uh, so one of them is essentially already done. And the other one, it's like another arc for Hammer. Um, oh, well, okay. Well, that entire arc is already written. All I gotta do is just like essentially draw the thumbnails. And then there's another story <laughs> that I'm putting together a pitch for. So, I mean, you know, I, I know what I want to do for that as well. So what I've been doing, uh, I've, I've, I really want to make a video actually on this that like try to like, you know, explain um, like this is like a quick way on how to like create comics. But I, I heard this from our CEO in Saturday AM, like, there, okay, there's this thing right now that we're doing called Summer of Manga. And Summer of Manga is this big event that, um, you know, a lot of artists from around the world, they'll like pitch us their story. And then we have it inside of our magazine Saturday AM. Uh, so right now I'm actually the editor for like five of the artists and what I've been telling them is like this really easy like thing to draw comics. What you should do is for every single page write one sentence and then that way that one sentence focuses you on that one page like this is mm-hmm. exactly what needs to happen on that one page. So however many panels it takes to do that one sentence is what you need to do. And um, hopefully it's not a lot of panels because that could get cluttered. But, you know, my point in saying that is if you write out sentence to sentence, at least, you know, not only one, these are how many pages there are. Two, this is exactly what I need to do for those pages. And, uh, you know, three, it'll just, you know, really like, 
you know, hone in everything, like all of your mental capacity, hopefully on those pages. So, I mean, that's, that's what I've been doing now for like all those other stories that I'm writing, um, which, you know, the time varies. Uh, sometimes it takes 20 minutes, depending on the chapter, or it can take, you know, I don't know, three hours. Like, so it really just depends. But, um, you know, when it comes to working everything with my career, like I, all of my free time for the most part goes to drawing. So after I get off of work, I draw or I go to sleep and then I wake up and then draw. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm married. So like I, I now I've been trying to set aside an entire day just for Jesse, uh, my wife. So that way we can just hang out. Um, I usually also uh, she'll come home around seven. And that's also usually the time I get home from work. So we'll just hang out until it's time for me to go to bed around like 10. So, I mean, you know, I, it, it's a lot of time management, but I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, all of my free time goes to drawing and creating and all of that. But yeah, that was a long answer. But no, <laughs> hopefully that answered what you were asking. So. Yeah, it's uh, I feel you, Jay. It's kind of the same for me. Um, my schedule. Well, now I got a job where I'll just be uh, more on a set schedule. I was working two jobs before, but now I'm one. So uh, probably six to eight hours a day. But it's a uh, it's set in a way where I can actually start planning out. I like to work right in the morning or late at night. It's like in, the evening doesn't work out too well for me. <laughs> so um, my plan, the hope is to get back now. I'll be able. I'm already trained to get up at four because I usually go out to work at five. Um, so just kind of use that same time now. I don't have to be at work at eight thirty to get a couple hours of writing done and work out. Uh, but right now, just because of the way things are, I also have two kids. You just you fit it in where you can. Like uh, I, I wasted my youth. <laughs> when I had all this free time <laughs> uh, so it's just you know sometimes now I don't like writing in the evening but it will every Wednesday me and my daughter will do two hours from six to eight in the Wednesday so it allows me to spend time with her and allow us to both to work on something that we want to do so um and like I said I got a two-year-old so it really is a, a very demanding like a uh, opinionated two-year-old that likes a lot of attention that likes to play <laughs> she's a treat but um but it does take a lot so um like I say it's just finding it where you can now but my thing, my advice, writing is at its best when you can do it for me at the same time, when it can be like kind of discipline and you can be in the schedule, you know, it's almost like a job you're showing up for. Like if eight and tw eight to 12 are my hours, then that's when I'm doing the eight to 12. That's when I find I can get into a flow better uh, and really knock out stuff. Um, but, you know, you, you got to do what you can. You know what I'm saying? If I didn't write, I kind of go crazy anyway. So I saw these thoughts up there. It's bad. It's real bad. <laughs> to piggyback off of what you were saying, I agree in the morning or nighttime, that's usually why I'll either stay up to three or I'll wake up at three. Everybody's asleep. So, I mean, mm -hmm. it's the perfect time to just get it done. No distractions. I have two dogs as well. So, I mean, I, I try to like, I don't have a kid yet, but whenever I do have a kid, I'm sure it's going to, you know, I'm not going to have any time. <laughs> <laughs> my career so that way I can have you know time to do this um and also have free time for them as well so I mean that's that's my goal but currently that's uh, that's what I do right now so okay nice um I just have um this is one question or actually two questions together and this will be my last question um would you mind telling us a little bit more about Saturday AM and Hammer I know that you've mentioned them in the past um and those are your ongoing uh, projects and also, uh, for both of you, do you have another project that you are working on or that you plan to work on? Um, or what are you working on? Um, are you planning on creating another comic? So let's answer the second question first. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm totally down to work with Jared again. Uh, we talked about it in the past. Uh, mm -hmm. Currently, we're, we're I'm I'm really busy. I assume Jared is also really busy, so I'm not sure exactly when it's gonna happen. But I would love to do another Lemonade Code two at some point, uh, you know. But um, and there's the other things I'm working on too. But I'll, I'll talk about that in a few. What What about you, Jared? Ah, uh, yeah, for sure. Lemonade Code, uh, love it. Anytime you're ready, let me know. <laughs> let me know. It was a great experience. So I, I, it'd be a, it'd be a dream to do it again. Um, as far as like uh, what I'm working on myself, uh, now that I got some available funds, I took the anthropomorphic rapping character and created this thing called Wild Culture, uh, where now it's like a fashionista Rihanna kind of cat. It's a rapping Pomeranian. <laughs> it's a DJ Mouse. 
and it's uh, it. in Diddy, uh, a bird mogul, oh, as you can see, maybe the shirt. Oh, <laughs> a bird in a suit. It's just funny to me. It's hilarious right. to me. Um, but this is my chance. Like I wanted to take a, it's just taking like different subcultures. So even bikers and different countercultures and stuff, subcultures, creating an animal character for them and just doing like a uh, old Looney Tunes style stuff, you know, so maybe a little bit more of a storyline for a graphic novel because uh, shorts aren't necessarily where it's at. But if it was my dream, it would be like a 11 minute shorts cartoon, something like that. Um, and I'm working on a book, uh, which I'll just say is Lord of the Matrix. No, Lord, Lords of the Matrix, basically. <laughs> no, it's like Lord of the Rings uh, meets the Matrix. It's uh, every myth or every fantasy character that ever existed exists in this futuristic city before history, basically, and uh, how that city came to be ruined, the fall of the city. But you would be able to tell. It's done in a way. Have you ever read uh, Terry Pratch and anybody this world? They just did a show, I think, called The Call, maybe on Amazon that was based on his book. So, um, but Discworld was just this idea that around the 16th or 17th century, like uh, they were building the city and all the elves and vampires, werewolves, all the magical creatures all lived together with the humans. And it took a satirical look at modern society through the lens of this thing, which is what I'm trying to do with this book. So it's like a cyberpunk story with uh, elves and dwarves and, but also like every kind of mythical creature you could think of instead of keeping it european i wanted to show like a metropolitan of like mythical creatures i guess so you got like tokoloshis from african culture um oh what are these things called in japanese culture ruba i'm i'm i'm, I'm screwed the word up but they're ruba kakori and they're basically they were people whose heads either their necks stretched very long or their heads could detach and float around the myth it's a little up in there on the myth. So I'm learning a lot about like uh, cultural myths across the world. That's kind of interesting to write, but it is, uh, it takes a lot of research because I don't want to disrespect anything. I don't mind. It doesn't have to exactly match up because it's high fantasy and like a uh, satire. Um, but it's a pretty good story, I think. So that's what I've been working on lately when I get the time, those two projects. Nice. Uh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> Thanks. No. Uh, all right. So in regards to um, Hammer and Saturday AM, so uh, what Saturday AM is, it's basically the world's most diverse manga anthology. Um, it, it, imagine Saturday, uh, imagine Shonen Jump, but instead of it being just in Japan, uh, it's from creators from all around the world. We have creators from Nigeria, uh, New Zealand, Cyprus, uh, you know, Hungary, everywhere around the world. I think we're in like 60 countries or maybe a little more. Like six continents, I know that, but it's it's we're in a lot of different countries. So my point in saying all that is, um, you know, we're a digital company. We have an app. Uh, you know, we have three different magazines. AM is kind of like our kids magazine. Um, it's like shonen, uh, all ages stuff like that. Um, you know, some some gore, not gore, but like some blood, I guess, and violence and stuff. So maybe not all ages, but <laughs> but it's uh that's our that's our kid brand, Shonen Jump. Um, our our seinen manga is Saturday PM. Uh, that's kind of like our older, uh, more adult um, situations and stuff. Nothing like um, nudity or anything like that, but it, it more of like just like more grounded realities. Uh, nothing like super fantastical. Like, for instance, Hammer, he can turn any part of his body into a hammer. So like he has magic abilities, but that's not Saturday PM. Instead, Saturday PM is like a kickboxer, you know, going down underground and, you know, doing all sorts of stuff, which is an awesome series, actually, that we have. Um, so that's, that's really cool. Uh, and then there's also... Um, Saturday Brunch, which is like our Jose manga magazine. Uh, it's a little bit older female readership, uh, you know, and we're focusing more on uh, LGBTQ leads and uh, female leads. So that entire magazine is, you know, filled with uh, those stories. And that's also really cool. I think we just have uh, this year or this month is our first year anniversary for that magazine. So that's really cool. But yeah, all of these are in our app. Um, you can download it for free. Uh, there's like over 130 issues of Saturday AM. Uh, I think like 13 issues of Saturday PM and four of Saturday brunch. Those are the, um, I think, uh, quarterly issues that we have. And uh, yeah, you know, luckily <laughs> I was uh, picked up along uh, around 2017. Uh, you know, one of the, the main artists in Saturday AM, uh, he reached out to me. Uh, his name is White Manga. He has a YouTube channel. Uh, it's pretty big. He teaches like artists, art uh, drawing and like telling stories and stuff like that. And uh, they he was looking at hammer um he asked me if i wanted to do anything with it and uh yeah i, I signed up for with saturday am and you know it, it came out no <laughs> inside of the magazine a lot of people like it 
I finally actually just got to chapter 25. Um, for everybody that doesn't know, Hammer is about this kid that gets sucked into his father's journal. And he's happy, but he doesn't, uh, well, he gets sucked into his father's journal. And he's trying to find a way out, but uh, he doesn't, like, know what to do or where to go. Uh, there are monsters that keep on coming towards him. And he has this weird hammer, ab weird hammer ability to turn uh, any part of his body into a hammer, usually his fist. And like, he'll fight the monsters off and basically try to survive while he looks for his father uh, or a way out, basically. So it's a, it's a pretty cool series. Um, I've been working on it for a very long time. Uh, I'm, I'm very happy that it's finally gotten to the point where it's at right now. Um, we actually, inside of... Uh, uh, with Saturday AM, I, I said this earlier when we were all talking amongst ourselves, but we just released a video game. Um, it's it's like it's called Flick Solitaire. Well, we're not we didn't release the video game. We were featured in this video game. It's a mobile app video game. Uh, you can download it on iOS or uh, Android. Um, and basically, it's like an entire deck of like all of our main characters from all of our different series. Uh, it's it's really cool. Um, I was very happy to see. You know, I think there's like four characters from Hammer inside of this deck. So it's it's really awesome to get into this position that I'm in. Um, I'm very excited to uh, to continue well, <laughs> my series. But uh, yeah, you know, I'm I'm very happy that you know I'm working on that, and I'm also working on um, a pitch, uh, another pitch for Oni. Um, I'm I'm working with uh, you know our editor that we were working with Lemonade Code. Uh, I'm I'm very excited to in the future work on Lemonade Code too. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't have time right now. Uh, there's another book that we're doing with uh, Saturday AM. Um, we have another app that we're about to release called Pilot Manga. Excuse me, and Pilot Manga is going to be more for like the younger generation, where um, if you have like a comic idea or um, anything like that, you can post more to this. Uh, and I think we're going to have a lot more contests and stuff, but inside of this app, we're going to have like exclusive comics just for this app. Uh, so we have um, a lot of different uh, artists that are signed up for this already, but the story that I'm going to do is called hammer time. And it's basically uh, the main character of uh, hammer. His name is stud. He uh, basically gets sucked into all of the other individual series of Saturday AM. So it's like a small crossover, like series where he's like going to like each series, like, you know, just, you know, doing what he needs to do and then going to the next world. So it's pretty cool. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, so what else? Uh, there are two more projects that are pending. I'm just kind of waiting until I get my emails back from everybody. Uh, one of the emails should be a script and then I'm going to hit the ground running for that one. No. <laughs> so um, things are working out. It's a very busy time, but I'm very happy, very happy to uh, just be in this position. And uh, yeah, you know, there you go. <laughs> If, if you guys want to look at Hammer or Saturday AM or anything like that, it's uh, just go to www.saturday-am.com. Um, you know, there, there's a link where you can download our app for free. There's, a, you know, a, a lot of different comic books, not just Hammer. There's um, um, a lot of different manga that you can read. We also have, uh, out of all of the, um, we have this one series called Clock Striker, which is like the first female black lead character shonen manga character so you know that that's just one out of several different series that we have it, it's really cool so I, I highly recommend it um if you if you want to go to our website check out some of the manga it's actually um i think maybe one chapter is free per series but if you go to our app uh you can either subscribe for 3.99 a month or you can get uh you know 36.99 a year and save ten dollars and you can have access to all of our uh issues like i said there's like a hundred plus issues uh, for Saturday AM. So it's like thousands of pages that you can read. So a pretty good time. So, I mean, I, I highly recommend it. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I do. And uh, that's, yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right, is there is there anything else that you guys want to say? Um, Pick up a copy of the book, Lemonade Code. At, in stores, I think everywhere. Yeah, yep, definitely. And this was a great time, man. I appreciate you having us on. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, it was really good. I was a little bit nervous, but you guys made it great. Oh, you <laughs> did a great job. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for uh, having us. Um, I don't really have anything else to say except buy the book, so uh, that would be great. <laughs> Does uh, Do Manuel you have a question? Well? Nope. All right. Thank you for All right. joining us. <laughs> <laughs> really appreciate it, guys. Thank you very All much. All right. Appreciate you. Have a nice day. You Take too. Care. Take care. You too. Take Thank care. you. Bye.
Bye, my name. <laughs>